Hello, 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 I am Rangaroo. And I'm Graham. Here today with another 1v1 from the Wargame Bootcamp Discord rookie tournament. We're in hell in a very small place, and who's battling out in hell today? So today, Rangaroo in the left, in the blue, we have, we're just going, we're going to call him Maurice. And he's playing as France. And then on the right here, in the red, we have Hand Done. Yeah, Hand Done. And we have, uh, he's playing as the Soviet Union. Mm hmm so pretty standard, you know. Nothing straightforward, nothing too complicated matchups. We'll see which one of them will go into the make play style sooner rather than later. As yes. This always tends to happen. It's going to be a French player. Of course. Re -re <laughs> especially the reserve, it's uh, spam. Yeah, kind of the reserve like is spam. Always going to go somewhat mechanized from playing France. Even if playing oh, Moto. Oh, that Puma trying to make it. Oh, actually almost did. He went right past the Screzit and then the Shrella 10M. I thought he was going to maybe survive there, but no, he does go down. So a little commando flank action is going to work out there for Maurice. And we already see Rang. He has a, like a decent amount of helicopters out here, commandos, and then Milan F3s inside the Panthers. And it'd be real, a little bit of smoke here. Oh, he's just dropping HE on him for the stun. I think if he just smokes with his mortar there, he, um, Handun can just rush this position. Yeah, he has the really decent tank advantage here with the T-72Bs. He just, yeah, just deal with that Milan and he's pretty much good to go. And okay, here we go, we've got the Fastilisk, Fire and Array, and that's got some pretty good smoke, if he can just hit a little bit closer. Yeah, it's a little bit on the wrong side there. Um, we see a Mirage coming in already, trying to drop some H, you know, little AoE action, see if it gets the... It's going to actually get both of two groups there, but the BMPT is alive, along with the BTR-90 and the GRU going up into the forest. He actually should still take this. I mean, he's, he does have the most Shulky squad as well, still alive, while there's some skirmishing going on in Foxtrot at the same time. Yeah, he does have the overwhelm and fire power. It's just he needs foot sloggers on the ground to finish up the job and take the territory. So pretty good push, yeah. If we look more towards the center, we yeah. are seeing Maurice, the friend of Maurice at least. <laughs> pushing through. He's got Legion 90s, and that's again into some decent positions as well as uh, two AMX 40s, and there's not a whole lot here to stop him. Yeah, and then we see a Super Etnard come out there, get a snipe on the T72, but it is taken down by the Buck Strela combo there. Immediate resupply brought by hand. Hand Hun, that's gonna bother me all game. <laughs> so he does, you know, does get, a, get rid of the, you know, heavyish tank right there but he does lose a super at nard so you know it's it wasn't a bloodless trade and honestly i'm not sure if i like the trade knowing what we know about the deck there he does have two cards of super heavies and losing that losing that nard off the get-go can be really painful yeah especially as just baseline front like your ground base heavy at is okay in this case he's got look like he's got milano yeah. Frizo, expensive transport very expensive he, he, he has some decent helicopter firepower but yeah, it's going to be a bit difficult for him when those UDRMs do eventually come online. Yeah, and like we see here, T80 being brought out. Um, T80s would be more than enough, I think, to help maybe stop this AMX 40 push. Which we have to say, Maurice, or friend of Maurice, however you want to call him, he does have AMX 40s along with some Legion infantry. They are being left behind, but they are moving into the two-point sector of Charlie here. Now, oh, but right into the VDV, RPG-29 is going out. We'll see if he can at least get one of them. Make sure here, this big. Oh no, another oh. miss there, and the VDV might actually die right here. Oh, it really needs to turn off the main cannon so we can get those auto cannons operational, but yes. he's going to be fine now. And he's got the Puma Pirate now being brought in. He's threatening the BRDM CV. And oh, scratch it, coming in clutch. Yeah, the T-80 is coming up along with the Motor Strelke right there, but that is just the base RPG-7. Though, if he can get a kill on one of them, I think the T-80 should be more than... Oh, he bring out a BMPT. Interesting choice there. He does know I, about the Legion 90. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd want the... It really, I guess, would just depend on the engagement. The BBT get the stun or not. Yeah, AMX-40 is still doing a pretty good job dealing with the infantry. And he does yeah. have the firepower advantage on that T-80. I mean, 2 on one we'll see how it goes. So T-80 might get first shot here. Yeah, this will be big here for it. Yeah, so you see first shot, he's going to want to back it up here. Because uh, you don't want the AMX-40 being able to just kind of duke it out. Yeah, you see there, they each trade down to 1 HP. Mortars from the Vasculus rounds trying to hit this Legion 90, but he's firing too far behind. He's, you know, correct for the distance there as they're moving forward. Because the BRDM is actually still in danger, Rang. Yeah, that Legion 90 does smell blood in the water. So the TKT comes in clutch, though. Yeah. 2v1, so it was AMX 40s. I mean, autoloaders are definitely 
quite nice in those sorts of situations. So that's going to give Hand Hun a pretty good stabilization in Charlie, considering just how close he was to losing it. Yeah, it's a the big thing I think we, from Maurice here now is you don't want to overextend. He's done some damage. I don't think it's critical damage. You don't really want to keep losing more and more units trying to hold Charlie because it's just not feasible. It's too close to it's too close to Delta, and he's traded away units. At the same time, Golf is completely under Handhun's control. Now he's gonna try and get what I think are Legion 90 here into this town, and that can be really annoying. You can get a lot. You can get some good snipes in there. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's Rima, oh. actually. Oh, okay. It's this Rima. could get pretty dirty here. The Osters are nearby. The BRDM's nearby. The <laughs> Legion 90 are just kind of running the show now. Yeah, smoke there on the BRDM to keep it safe. The, the VAB is trying to catch it. Missed the first couple of shots. The BMPT should be able to deal with it. And the BTR90 with Spetsnaz and GRU trying to get there. And the BTR90 might get the kill. Oh, no. So the Legion are going to get in there, but they lose a squad. And this is where the Eryx is just disgusting. Yeah. You get yes, the automatic snipe there. Honestly, if he brings the BRT, um, BRT, R, uh, BTRT, excuse me, down there, that should help a lot. Yeah, he's bringing in a lot more infantry reinforcements as well. But really, for uh, Maurice, he doesn't even need to fully capture Charlie, just controlling that little sliver of it, just like to the left side of the road. All you really need to do, but I don't think he's going to have the opportunity because he did overextend a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he, no, he definitely has overextended here a little bit. We see the BMPT was enough. You know, a big thing, if it can get the Legion 90 in the right spot, it can, you know, kind of almost auto-kill it. They were weakened, so it helps. Oh, but the beach are idea of unforced air right there. He must have not known about the Rima 85. What? Actually, he had to have known because he's dropping Vasculus rounds on it already. So, yeah, this is a little bit of an error there by Handhood. He's going to lose that Motor Stroke 90 squad, most likely. And he lost that BTR 88. Yeah. He's going to be holding that town. Last defense of France here. That's where all the Russians come pouring in. Spetsnaz grew. Getting in close quarters. He's done, honestly, a pretty good amount of damage in Charlie. Just with a couple of infantry squads. I mean, he did also lose all of the AMX-40s and a bunch of support equipment. Yeah. All the helicopters are dead, too. We see oh, Mirage coming in trying to get a snipe on... Was oh, this going for the CV? No. No, he's going to be a little short there. He might be guessing. He got the, sh the Shrella, I think, right there, which is nice. We're trying to see. Oh, and Hanhun does actually save his GRU squad, too. He put it in there in CQC with that uh, Rima 85, and that's where just having the Dragon off and not having an LMG was kind of a, a hindrance there to the Spetsnaz. Yeah, but, but he does save it. at least he does stabilize Charlie. But honestly, even Riv Maurice, you know, kind of full yeeting into Charlie, he's not in a terrible position because... You know, Bravo's under his control, Gof not so much, and Foxtrot is where we'll probably see the grind out now, as both sides are really starting to deploy stuff there. Because it's very, it's very unfeasible for Hand Hunt to push into Echo, it's just really right. too far deep, the terrain yeah. is all forced, but it's too far, you could oh. say. And then Bravo, especially against France in the infantry game, you're just going to get outplayed. Yeah, you're not gonna outgrind them in that in that area right there. There, Soviets obviously have some really good choices, but for the most part, you know, it's the IFVs, right, that we really like to see from the Soviet Union. Um, you know, unless you're just a you know VDV Chad, we do see oh, the BTR ADA right there. Yeah, getting some little bit of snipes, and I actually like this here ring by Hanhun, like committing pretty quickly into Foxtrot. You don't want to give you know friend of Maurice time to kind of set up there and get himself stabilized. Oh, and the Amex 10 missing there on the BTR. It should still get the kill, but that's really annoying right there. Oh no, it did hit. Just didn't, didn't get the kill. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, I, I do definitely like that from uh, both players so far because this has been a pretty aggressive match, and we're only yeah. 10 minutes or so in, which is good to see from a rookie tournament, as we've seen in our previous uh, replay from the rookie tournament. You know, people can very much get into that uh, like citadel mentality. Yeah, you get into like almost, it's like I'm going full base defense mode, right? Except the base defense is the entire map. <laughs> Both these players have been very aggressive off the start here. I, I, I like to see as well, I know the viewers like to see that hot action ring. Uh, it leads to, you know, you lead, it typically can lead to more mistakes, but I think that's the better way, especially when you're starting off the game, to get into because you really, the, di the more dynamic it is, I think it opens up more opportunities for you to succeed. Uh, we do see T-80s, yeah, VDV also going into golf here. Hannon kind of like Reese, you know, doubling up on defense in golf. I don't really like that. There's no, mo there's nothing that he sees from Friend of Maurice that suggests there's an imminent assault 
by any means on golf. Obviously, with our, our God Vision ring, we can see there's, there really isn't anything going in that direction. He should be focusing his attention on Foxtrot and trying to at least secure half of that sector. Yeah, he's definitely seizing the initiative, yeah. Because we do have some reinforcements going into Foxtrot, like a single T80, and some IFVs. But once right. again, if those Legion 90s can just start walking up to the front, get of an Eric's range, I mean, we've just seen how deadly those guys have been in pretty much open field battles. Yeah, absolutely. And we see that trading out those elite infantry units for the uh, the French is a priority there for the USSR. Like, you want to, as we saw earlier, you know, two, Le two Legion 90 squads could just do so much damage if you're not prepared for it. And allowing the French to kind of set up get into position use some of their like better that missile technology they have and some of that elites that elite equipment really annoying we see here that t80 he's just chilling there's no infantry protecting whatsoever and that erics is just you know it's got his name written all over it yeah and he doesn't have enough like infantry and recon in front of his vehicles right now to actually screen for him because yeah he doesn't okay he does have the one card model strength at least in the five point transport which are good just buffer units but that's all that's all they can really do yeah, absolutely. It, now, I will say, you know, Freda Maurice is being very aggressive with his Legion 90. On one hand, I, I do like it. I just talked about that earlier here. But you don't want to overextend and just lose them. I know you want to kill that T-80. I, I get it. And he's, he's definitely doing it. The, the Semi-AT, you know, one thing I'd say if your hand, and I think, you know, maybe getting the K-29 instead of the Mi-AT, probably a little, a little bit better there. That armor is nice, or what we call Gucci mm -hmm. rigor. It's very Gucci. I mean, we've seen it time and again <laughs> with Grape Jelly Man just going Ooh. in the hard with his Beluga Rails. OG. OG. I haven't casted Grape Jelly Man in a while. I know. it's It has been quite a bit. It's a bit of a shame. If he's watching a high level tournament. If he's watching the channel, he needs to get it together and start mm -hmm. playing. We see the Crotale actually getting the snipe there on the MI8, so it doesn't even matter. BMPT coming up as well. <clears throat> I mean, like, there's Hayden has firepower. He has units, though. These recon, you know, tanks are going to be annoying for him. AMX 10 RC. There's no Roycat around, so it has that, you know, AMX 10 supremacy, right? Oh, that Vassal is trying to get the snipe on the Cortel. It is down to two HP, but he's not shooting again. So, on one hand, friend of Maurice leaving his Cortel there, you don't want to see that because you know someone's going to try and snipe your AA. But on the flip side, it's not like the Vasculist with one salvo is going to kill anything of value. Honestly, it might be worthwhile for Hand Hunt to invest in a, like a proper heavy tank, like another 1987 mm -hmm. T-72. Because yeah. especially against, when you're fighting against France and you're fighting the more low to mid-range vehicles, you're usually just gonna get outclassed. So say Mex is a scary, to 10s and the 40s. You, if you can bring in a super heavy or just a heavy tank, you can really just outclass, especially baseline French. And then right. force him to play the escalation game of, oh, you want to fight me in the field? The clerk or nothing, baby. Plus, the super Etnard, one of them's already dead as well. So mm -hmm. there's only limit, like you say, like, the Leclerc is really his best option of dealing with heavy tanks. And the French player right now, I just don't think that's what he wants to invest in. Uh, we see the Legion 90 getting a pick off in the BMPT there, which is just, just shows you that thing is so nasty with the Eric's French supremacy, French bias, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> running around getting some nice picks. <laughs> More infantry being called out here. And Freda Maurice has, I think, you know, aptly recognized that the center of the conflict is going to be Foxtrot. Now, I will say that based on Hanhun's position rank, he does have multiple avenues if he wants to, to try and get into Foxtrot and take it away. Now, he does have a slight point lead, but it's it's nothing, as we know, it's, that's that's really nothing. They're basically in a tie right now. Or the yeah. Legion of... Once again, he's pushed them up really aggressively. GRU here getting Dragunov shots in. Moto Shroki coming up as well. It's actually in the Legion now. They're at, you don't want to get them panicked. They get them panicked. That BTR9 is going to just roll right up on them and wipe them with its uh, AGS. Because mm -hmm. the one thing which Tantund has definitely been investing a lot is infantry fire support. He has all yeah. the IFEs that's bloody available to the Soviet Union on the front line. He is more than prepared to start blapping some Legion 90, preferably out of Eric range. Yeah, I, uh, the only thing we haven't seen is a BMP three, basically. <laughs> like that's the only, you know, for for all its parts. The only yeah, you see the BMPT there getting a nice kill on the AMX ten RC, trading out with it. The VAB trying to get a shot here on the BTR eighty. Just a lot of like we said earlier, the Soviets have a lot of 
quality IFE support. You pair that with a really excellent support tab. They have a great, you know, they're one of the best decks in the game for a reason. And, there's, and the French typically aren't played by themselves for a reason because the Germans complement their strength so well with Eurocore. So there's a, definitely an avenue like you talked about earlier, Rang, where if you can get hand and kind of get it together and get momentum going, it could be extremely difficult to deal with the Soviets. Yeah, because you just have that really glare and weakness of the French of not having that armor supremacy, which always makes it a little bit of a crutch playing France in a more yeah. like high, this is like some high level tournament, but in tournaments in general, you know, if someone throws bloody um, entente against you as France, you're gonna yeah. have a bad time. Yeah, absolutely. And like, even like we were talking about before, you don't need a super heavy to really deal with France because their only option is going to be to, like you say, get in the escalation game. And then the, they'll probably end up losing that anyways. You know, the clerk's great, but it's not, you know, I think I'd rather take a BU over to the clerk if I had mm -hmm. to pick, you know, if I have to pick one for a pretty heavy duty fight here. But like that medium heavy range tank, like the 110 to 150 ish, France has nothing there. Once it's AMX 40 or Leclerc or Bust for the most part. Yeah. Honestly, pretty funny how that military, like, just went from AMX 30 to the clerk. It wasn't like a midpoint in between. They went yeah. from no armored tanks, 105 to, okay, here's a massive 120 main battle tank. Yeah, because a lot of the uh, stuff you see in the game here, like AMX 40s, AMX 32s, those were purely like modifications made for them to sell to other nations. Yes. <laughs> which most of them weren't even successful, like in being sold. So the jump, like you say, it's kind of funny how France has like that. They rocked the AMX 30 for probably way too long, <laughs> and then like way too long, and then they make the jump to the Leclerc. We see here oh, up the reserve is trying to stop the MTLBs there. The problem with the LRAC 73, it's just not that great not able to get mtlb's tank in their form and now we have a little bit of an, a fight here amix and rc coming down let's see if he can get the kill and he will oh, because the leclerc was bought all of our bsing going on and we mm -hmm. missed it he grabbed it and that's a big boy on the battlefield first from the french player yeah it actually gives him a pretty good initiative advantage here clearing up the rest of han hun's forces i did like han hun's like maneuvering moving from the north of foxtrot and trying to push through like that's yeah. good rather than just trying to go through the open field between charlie and foxtrot because i can definitely screw you over but yeah yeah look look now coming online there's not a whole lot of infantry fire support to back him up so he's a little bit dangerous position if he you know, pushes up a bit too much yeah and he's also exposed oh. right here the mig 25 cluster coming out right now and he's yeah he's super exposed there's no smoke no nothing here uh clean airdrop let's see if he can get how much damage oh. he can get on and gets just gets, outright gets the kill yeah it's such a gucci kill we have for hand hunt. yeah because yeah, only that, one the clerk that, left yeah, it's one of the clerk left. You're stuck with AMX 40s. We've already seen the AMX 40 will struggle even against like T80s and proper engagements. There's a role for the AMX 40, obviously, Ring, but just armor on armor, it can be really tough using it. And right now, that T72 OBR 87, now he's king. It, you know, with a lot of infantry support here, Handhun, if he takes advantage, he has a really good opportunity to do some critical damage to Friend of Maurice. Yeah, he just needs to make sure he doesn't yeet it into Legion 90s, because there's very limited heavy anti-tank left here. Hopefully he does take advantage of this. Yeah, and the Rima 85 right here, getting really aggressive, but they're crossing the open. T-72 getting some snipes into it. Now, that does reveal the position of the BR BRDM2, but, you know, if that's really, like... They're both basically tied right now. And so, like, these minus, you know, these small little gains, yes, is it something that's important? Sure, but killing the CV is really what you want. And having it, you know, exposing yourself to it. Now he knows, hey, I have Rima 85 here. And there's infantry coming up. That's one thing you can say about Handon. We've said it again. He's continuously pumping out infantry with IFV support the entire game. Yeah. Oh, that Vab's. That Vab might get that BRDM. Which would be, oh. yeah, that's yeah, a great pick off there, my friend of Maurice. You know, also saw a Super Etnard being brought, but he is a little bit hesitant <laughs> on attacking, losing sight of T72B. Hmm. Yeah, but now here, because he overcommitted once again, so he does get nice snipe there, but he's Rima 85, he's going to send them forward. Uh, I get, like, the idea you want to snipe some stuff here, but the GRU might catch them, maybe not. The most stroke, you know, they're there. Let's see the BTR 90. I mean, the Apelos should annihilate it more infantry more osas btr 80s coming up 
It's, this is the problem with the elite infantry, the French. If you if you're trading them out, it can get pretty bad for you because you you really don't want to be losing whole chunks of squads. Yeah, he's been kind of just yeeting them without fire support, and you really even with Legion nineties, you need to have fire support, the AMXs, IFVs, all of that lovely stuff, backing you up. Because then you get into situations like this, and this is just not ideal. Yeah. It's like being in Northern France in nineteen forty. It might be worse. Because mm -hmm. you see right there, there was no BTR-90 then. and Because the big thing there, you can see where the Remas get caught. And so because they're using their LMG and their PLS is on at the same time, he, the LMG is defaulting to attack with his motor stroke. And so he, you know, you wanted to turn off the LMG there so you could at least maybe snipe the BTR-90 over killing a couple, you know, models of a 10-point Soviet infantry squad. But unfortunately, he loses both Rima squads there, which is just really expensive. Like, Rima 85, Legion 90, they're great. Obviously, we like them. We say you should use them. But they are, you don't want to just be trading them out. Yeah, he really says be throwing probably more Chasseurs and Reservates yeah. on the front line here just to buy time for his, well, I would say, armor, but there's not a whole lot of armor left here. Especially just looking at the front line, is pretty much one AMX-40 whose entire job is to stop his entire Soviet push. Yeah, and right now, if Handon can have the game sense and knowledge, he's in a perfect spot to win this Foxtrot position. He's going to see, yeah, we're dropping clusters. Oh, clusters on the CV. Yeah, he guessed correct. I mean, there's only so many spots it's going to be. Really big pickup there as he is bringing an MI-8 in with the infantry CV. The MiG-25 also makes it out, which is massive here. And so now Handhun has taken that vaunted and coveted momentum ring. Mm -hmm. And also just using that MiG-25 so effectively, yeah, it's definitely putting a lot of pressure here on Maurice to invest in anti-air, which also screws you over in the ground defense game. So he's in a very bad position. I yeah, and, and also two really bad buys here by Maurice. One, the immediate CV call out for Foxtrot. You know, I understand that you want to stop a potential point tick here, but it's one point. You're not going to lose the game by give, letting, you know, Handhun have five minutes of a point tick at this just at this current stage. That's not going to kill you. Second one is the Caesar. And the Caesar isn't even being used for infantry support or defensive fires or anything like that. He's trying to snipe this Charlie CV with it. And it's just, <laughs> you have, you can go look in there, you can see where he's just been dropping it. He has a nice little push here in golf that's, it's not going to go anywhere because of the T-72, but he at least, you know, might force a reaction out of Handhun into maybe over defending, over, over committing or something like that here. Uh, these AMX-13 is going to try and tangle this T-72, but Super it's, it's not coming in. Oh yeah, Super Retinard is coming in. But it's the 110 pointer. I mean, even if you get the kill here, as long as it's gotta live. He doesn't. Oh, oh, the buck's dead actually. So okay. Okay. No, it's fine. That's a pretty good kill. But yeah, yeah, he definitely really screwed over his momentum by those two things. He needs frontline units, especially in the Gulf. He he has a like a good shot here in yeah. Gulf to clear not clear it out completely, but at least contest it. He does, yeah. It's a good counterattack in there. I mean, he lost a lot of chasseurs, but that's fine because they're not that expensive. And he had took the Amex 13s, paired them with some Amex 10s. Nice little fire support ball. Well, with the MiG-25 here, they're just feasting on the French right now. Just destroying these light armored tanks like it's nobody's business. Oh, the MiG-25 does go down now. I was about to say, yeah, good job about it. Quite enjoy kind of like a little bit of a slower level play because real scene units you just never see you know, top tier t players play because, you know, these aren't like top tier units. Everyone just takes the SU-25T in 1v1 or the um, SU-27 MP. M. M, yeah. Everyone knows you bring the SU-24. Oh, yeah. Or bus. And so actually I want to point out, Hanhun drops a marker down for the Kratal. Maybe he thinks it's a Mistral or something, but he accidentally, he drops it right on the TV. <laughs> in there for probably the right there. I think he might have thought it was a Mistral or something. I don't think he has, he has nothing really that he can use to, at least immediately, to deal with that. It's just kind of funny that he guessed oh. exactly on the CV there. The lucky pick of Gash your Battleship. But, yeah, we are seeing the continuation of the Gulf push, but the reserve it's a little bit outclassed by all of Hanton's. Really just his higher fees for Hanton has been... Coming out very much on top now, oh. especially after dealing with all the armor. And the Panther call out here is extremely aggressive. 
And once again, this it just feels like he's like, I gotta get a CV, I gotta get a CV. And it's like, man, you're you're within ten points of each other. The CV is not necessary here. And the Super Ednard lost whatever it was trying to kill, and it's gonna dive right past these Screzits. He is still alive, miraculously. The buck stops right now. Yep, and see if he can get the kill here on the Super Etnard. Oh no, he misses, but he's flying over the Screzit, and he still hasn't. Oh, he was he trying to kill? He's trying to kill a Oh, he's gonna get away, which is just yeah. I mean, he the super Etnard shouldn't get away. That should have been punished big time. But uh, he got he got lucky there that his super Etnard's alive. But once again, he spots the AMX thirty here. And I also am kind of curious why buy the MX thirty B when you've been getting clustered continuously. It seems like maybe you'd want to grab the the infantry CV, which also I guess that just died in golf too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's really just screwed himself over of trying to invest too much in CVs rather than frontline units, which could actually win him the game or give him a decent shot at least yeah 100 percent i uh very you know unit your unit call out selection in moments like these is just extremely important and a lot of times you know people see that they're down and like oh you know i'm losing i'm losing i'm losing but there's 14 minutes left in this game it's sub 10 points and to be real you're fighting over mostly one point sectors now so you i mean really up until about the four five minute mark you can take your time right now with the current trajectory of the game and keep it going here a little bit now obviously if the plus one's going to start here but it's nothing crazy for him and he had a good push if he, if he consolidated golf that probably would have been a smarter move uh, it's you know it's just up like pan panic mentality kicks <laughs> in because it's like oh god i'm getting clicked on the scoreboard i need to fight the scoreboard and really you need to be fighting the front line yeah, I completely agree. We see the Super Etnards coming back out. Uh, this one hasn't... It did get the nice kill in the T-72, so can't say he has another. But once again, he's diving right in. I don't know what he's trying to hit with that thing. Oh, and he's dead now. Blopped. Oh, yeah. Blopped. Oh, Big yeah. blopped. Damn. Okay, yeah, I think we big. can take us through a times two at 13.05. Because he's, oh. he's buggered. Buggered? He's buggered. I mean, look at South of Bravo. we got some Modest Rackley's setting up here so maybe he's gonna try some sneaky maneuvers yes i i went to the plus two as you said oh. okay cool i just want to make sure but yeah i mean they mix in here pulling up some chessers i mean he's doing uh, one thing i'll say about a hand hun is he recognized that he didn't need to go over the top right there sometimes you know that's important and you kind of want to but when you're trading as efficiently as he has, there's really no need to overexpose yourself for no reason, right? It's It can be hard from the red position there sometimes to completely just lock down. Well, as I say that, he charges that T-80 right up into this. <laughs> I was complimenting Hand Hood. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is an L rack, and this is not Warno, so it's not gonna, it didn't just auto die. Wow. Did you think I was gonna miss the Warno? Uh... I was going to say it earlier about um, all the prototypes are historically inaccurate, which would happen in a game like Warno. That's true. Warno only has historically age-appropriate units for the very realistic World War III in Eastern Germany in 1989. Yes. <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday. My grandpa was there. Or my dad, <laughs> excuse My dad was there. Grandpa be true. He was, grandpa was he sniping. Yeah, he was CV sniping in the forests of Southeast Asia during World War II. <laughs> I don't know why the French sent a volunteer helicopter contingent, but they did. They did. I mean, these two helicopters are going ham. And that's one thing, like, we talked about when we were looking at the decks earlier, Rang. Um, you want the Tunguska. Like, you, the, the Tunguska is the helicopter killer. Uh, M, you know, if we want to be very specific here. I don't think, you know, Handon, if he watches this at all, I don't think you need the Osa and Strela combo. Yeah, the Tungus Grim is just such a good unit. And I actually, I do like the Osa for 30 points. Um, I forget who we who we casted a while ago. Oh. A big, a big, big name who used it. It might have been Jackie or someone like that. And I, I saw, wow, I was like, that's pretty interesting. And he would bring him out in groups of two or more. Uh, I remember one thing, I think mm -hmm. he had a group of four, so one of them, the guy had a four stack. And they annihilated. Because there's yeah. just so many missiles shooting at one time. And they do have the 7 HE. So you get the two hits, it it's they're they're killing planes. Yeah, because the double of those osas is only sixty points, which yeah. is very very okay. affordable. 
Yeah, so it's just a you know just a little thing right there to call out. It'd be interesting to see. That's one reason though you want the Tunguska though. Oh, you brought the Elite Mista out now to counter battery the Caesar because the Caesar hasn't moved a single time and it might go. To oh no, he is so close to getting getting a kill on the Caesar right there. Honestly, this is like some Ukraine conflict footage. The Caesar getting counter battered by a Mista. And now <laughs> he really needs to move out Caesar, please, please move it. Oh, the Bravo CV. Got no, he's on. Oh yeah, some Bravo backline shenanigans right there. But he also, what's funny is, he was trying to kill the. I I don't know if he knew the CV was there. I think he was trying to kill the AA piece that shot down his plane from earlier because he he just he saw the missile come from there. But now he's gonna know. Like he's gonna see the Panther come in here, and now he knows exactly what's going on. Yeah. Oh, he's just trying to counter by the Mista, but. Handhood has moved his Mista now. I don't know if he's moved it after this last shot. Oh, yeah, he has. He's trying to snipe. Oh, he's trying to CD snipe, too. If I get a better position. I mean, Handhood also says this is a very good defensive position as well. Like you said, he has an overextended. Uh, Maurice is trying to make his uh, pushes happen, but he just does not have the firepower. Yeah, and I also like from Handhood that he, so he brought out a Mista, which, which I, I think is fine. I think the Mista is Told, nothing to say against that. But I like that he brought it at vet. You're not calling out two mistas in a 1v1, right? It's just the odds are just extremely low it's going to happen. So, uh, you know, on the on the other side, where's Maurice? He has the, you know, basically the unvetted card of two Caesars, and he's never going to call both those out. So that mista has already overperformed the Caesar by miles. Mm -hmm. Much better cost value. Like most of those super heavy units, apart from tanks, it's really worth rather just only bring run. If you need to bring a multiple of them, you'll. Haven't, you're already in a bit of a die straight. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm curious to see, it, you know, one thing like when we, will, when we cast the rookie tournaments, it's they can. There are a lot of times more. Well, I don't say a lot of times because of what we casted last week, right? But they can be sometimes a little more dynamic because they don't have quite the same game knowledge as you see from like the elite tournament, where it's, it feels like every move the the players do is you know is calculated. It's very skirmishy. Whereas this one was extremely brawl like. Just non-stop brawling for a while, but now you can tell it's kind of degenerated down. We've broken down here a little bit as the friend of Maurice keeps trying to throw helicopters <laughs> around on this side. You know, he hasn't Basically, had no bell. Yeah, he said, "I hear no bell." <laughs> He's just but, gonna uh, keep sending Frenchmen into the slaughterhouse. Unfortunately, I think the bell's about to ring. And look, he's still trying to snipe that crits out. He knows that he's like, all right, well, I killed the CV that works. And that misses killed two CVs. Uh, yeah. Not that I think that, I think the game was securely in hand at this point. But, oh, the crits going to live right there. And they going to get out of dodge here. I'm, I'm More betting the uh, KZ ratio is going to be pretty skewed at the end of this. Yeah, I would imagine it's going to be pretty skewed. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, just look at how much you know, stuff Handhun has on the map. Like, it's yeah. just wild. He's traded very effectively. Uh, and even though Maurice has, like, fell off towards, like, the latter half oh of my this God. game, he was doing pretty good at the start. I know so, too. He overcommitted, buys. though. One thing was an overcommitment, and there was no protection for the Leclerc. Like, one Kratal isn't enough protection for a Leclerc. Uh, and especially if you have no... You know, if he had smoke and he was micring it back and forth, you know, I'm, okay, I'm kind of okay with that there. But even then, like, you know, against the Soviets, I'd be very careful. They have so many weapon systems that are just primed to blow up a super heavy tank. Mm -hmm. I, I would be very cautious to bring out a Leclerc with basically no support. Because you're kind of just you're saying, hey, please blow me up like it's War Thunder. And yeah, there we go. That's a kind of what yeah. I expected from the KD skew, like 1500 or so. Yeah, yeah, roughly 1500 ish right there between the two players. And it definitely felt like, it, um, Rang, like you mentioned earlier. It's just, there was a point, I don't know, I guess maybe around the 10 minute mark, 12 minute mark, where it, it was just clear that Handhun had a better feel of where the game was going and how the match had progressed and just start to efficiently trade out and make, and make smart unit call outs too. Yeah, yeah. That yep, MiG-25 was definitely the most value he got out of any of his units. The knockout yeah. the clerk, AMX-40, the CV. Like, he did so much damage because there just wasn't a whole lot of good ground presence anti-air or heck, even, like, a single of that Rafale to stop him. Yeah, I mean, he brought two of them. 
two authentic um, Raphaels and then bring out a single one, which is just, you know, interesting where it, cause that's where you talk about like unit selection. It, I, I don't know if buying, you know, the, the fancy French plane is the right answer in that situation, but I think that's a better answer than buying the Caesar, for example. I don't know. I mean, like at least that one makes sense. You're getting hit pretty hard by the MiG 25s. They're killing your tanks. I can understand that. Like, okay, I'm going to shut down the airplay with a Raphael. Now that doesn't really help your front line at all. But I do think that makes more sense in terms of trying to win the game. Whereas stuff like the super heavy artillery, I really only think you should buy that when you're ahead. As we saw, I mean, as we saw in this game, Hanton was ahead. He buys out the Mista. And then it gives you kind of like a compounding return because uh, it's just now it's now anything that it kills is just extra value to your position. Whereas like when you buy a 120 point artillery piece and you're losing the game, you need that thing to kind of win you the game. <laughs> yeah. heavy, Caesar is commanded by Napoleon himself. Yeah, when you're, when you're getting post heavy like that and you're trying to see if you snipe, it's never a good sign because you're just... You're just going to yeah. lose even more front line, and if your opponent's already ahead, it's really not that big of a deal for him to buy a, another CV. They just lose a tick for a little minute or two. Yeah, definitely, and I think the biggest thing you could see there was it felt like from his position, Maurice's, that the tick, like he was scared of the tick, but in a, on a one point, basically one point sectors for the most part that you're fighting over, that you're going to contest with a sub, you know, 10. I mean, the, the the point lead was never higher than, like, 60. So that's basically nothing in a 1v1 game. That's really, on most maps, that's not that big of a deal. Uh, you can get that back. You don't need to freak out and, you know, start making crazy decisions or making crazy buys to CV snipe or whatever. You can take five minutes to reconsolidate yourself, come up with a plan, and try to execute it. Hey, it might not work. But I think that's a better decision than trying to just immediately stop a point tick because you see the plus one. Indeed. But no, there's a lot of, a lot of honestly, pretty good lessons to learn from that match. I mean, both both players played pretty well considering this was the rookie tournament. Absolutely. Yeah, it was, it was definitely, for the most part, a very entertaining game. I'm sure the viewers will like it. And hopefully I can take my own advice and use that for, for a dub, but that probably won't happen. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> no, I'm all good. Alright, and thank you very much for watching guys, and as usual, please just take it easy.